Hello? Hello? Who am I speaking to? Uh, this is Rika. Rika, how you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm great now that you called. <laughs> well, you, you kind of shamed me into it, so here I am. I <laughs> shamed you into it, okay. Uh, tell us a little <laughs> bit, tell me a little bit, uh, tell us all a little bit, or the ones that don't know, uh, what you... Uh, what it means to be a volunteerist. What what does that mean? Uh, volunteerism is relying upon voluntary society, uh, not relying upon a monopoly on the initiation of violence, which is what government is as we know it. They're, they're, all governments rely upon violence to get things done. Uh, if they want to pay for something, it's called taxation, but it's really theft. They use a gun to steal money from people. Uh, uh, if, uh, well, like anything, look at it. Look at look at public schooling. Like, what are your um, what are your property taxes? What happens if you don't pay them? Yeah. Someone will show up at your house and, and take, kick you out of and it. Take it from you. They sure <laughs> will. Uh. Yeah, they. They will, they will, because it's not really your property. We're literally paying rent. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little, I, I've had a few shots, so I'm a little weak, <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to have a few shots. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like, taxation is theft, and war is legalized murder, and basically voluntary society is not relying upon people with guns. To get things done, we're we as a species, as human beings, are capable of doing much better than that. Well, I like to think that we are much, much better than that. Myself, also. Um, like, yeah. I, like I said, uh, S five is going to do some stuff for you guys. We want to include you guys in in this. You're here already. Uh, we want to know what you think about it. Uh, that's why I was asking you to explain that. Uh, give us. Tell us a little more, if you can, if you would. Well, like, I, I used to be a constitutionalist myself, so I understand where, uh, like, the auditor community is coming from. I don't mean to be rude, but I kind of see them as a little bit silly now, but that's because I'm at a different point on the path, the journey, you know, but that... I also can appreciate what they're doing because they are opening people's eyes to the, the, the police state that we are living in, and it's, it's a good thing. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about your, uh, your, your videos on plants uh, and those kind of things. Uh -huh. I, I thought those were really neat. Well, uh, I'm a self-taught herbalist. That was kind of my part of my journey into anarchism. Um, I, I don't know. The whole thing, it's like years and years in the making, you know, to get to the point where you, you see things for what they really are instead of what your indoctrination camp, a.k.a. school, told you yeah. it was for so long. And uh, uh, this was back when... We still um, we still paid for cable TV and uh, do you know that the what, what was it called the the prepper shows? Do you remember? Those? Oh, oh yeah 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 the uh, yeah I saw those. Uh, <laughs> I looked at some of those. Where they, yeah they would like they would like rate the preppers on how well they were prepared for things. Yeah. I think it was on the History Channel. Yeah yeah. <laughs> but like I that show I found it. Entertaining, obvious. Yeah, doomsday preppers. Think I think I crimba. Um, That's it. Like my way of prepping, I started. I went and got um, a regional field guide for wild edibles for wild edible plants. So I started going out and trying to identify all of my wild edible plants, and then that led me into like herbalism. So I started doing that, and now I'm now I'm just the weird. Aunt lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
you're not weird. I uh, I actually know a lot of edible plants around here in Oklahoma. There's really not that many here in Oklahoma. When I was up in Washington State, however, there yeah, you could you could probably go out in the woods and never starve there. There's so many things to eat out there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it was. That's the thing. There's no reason to starve to death on this planet. It's right. full of abundance. Well, you guys probably never heard of poke salad, but it's something we have around here. <laughs> it's actually a poisonous plant. Uh, you have to boil it twice, and it's pretty good. Uh, we put it. Uh, we put eggs in it. We put uh, all different kinds of stuff in it. It's really pretty good. I really like it. Uh, have you heard of that before? I, I have heard of poke salad. I haven't tried it, but it does grow around here. I know what it is. Uh, everywhere here, uh, when they will uh, pile up brush and burn it, it seems like that's where poke salad grows. We got a lot. I got a hundred. Uh, I don't have. My family has a hundred acres here, and there's quite a bit of poke salad. Uh, there's uh, uh, morale mushrooms grow here. We have an abundance of blackberries, uh, more than we need. Uh, uh, we have mulberry trees. Uh, we actually fruit trees are a little hard to grow here if they're not native. We have some native plums and native pears that grow pretty good here. But uh, our weather usually messes up any uh, fruit trees uh, that we might have <laughs> that have actually managed to make it. Uh, usually they will come out and bloom and then it will freeze again. And we got we get a lot of uh, extreme weather here, a lot of, and it's uh, hard to grow stuff. Our gardens get beat down by hail a lot. Uh, they grow a lot of corn here uh, and make a lot of moonshine, uh, <laughs> if you like that. But uh, tell, yeah, us some, there's, there's, tell us some more. There's a lot of corn here, too. Um, uh, well, I, I'm not sure. Do you, do you have, like, a specific question? <laughs> wait, um, wait, Red River Audit in the chat says, Rika, tell us about the opium plant. Yeah, that's. Uh, oh. I was going to ask that. <laughs> hmm. Well, it's just... It's, um, it's bread seed poppy, uh, the Hungarian bread seed poppy. Um, I get them, well, that particular package I got from Seed Savers Exchange online. And uh, it, it doesn't taste good, but the uh, tincture that I made out of it is awful. It's, and not because of the alcohol, because of the opium. <laughs> Gross. And is that a pretty good pancake? Well, I imagine it would be. It's <laughs> opium. Uh, uh, it it does work, but I'm a little scared of using it too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I actually had a little problem with my medicine just uh, not long ago. Uh, I have to take pain medicine four times a day, or I can't walk. I'm actually kind of in some pain now. Uh, I get back spasms really bad. I can't hardly walk. Uh, if I don't have my pain pills, it's so painful I just can't hardly do anything. And that's why I was checking that out. I I saw you made that. Uh, some Murray get a little taste of, uh, I, I assume that was vodka, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. I love seeing Murray. I, uh, I love dogs. I have a dog. Uh, and my only boss, as a matter of fact, is my dog. Uh, I have no other bosses. Uh, <laughs> uh, I got, I've been here since Rika the Hopeful Volunteerist. Who's your favorite YouTuber source of info? Favorite YouTube resource of uh, info source. Um, my favorite YouTuber info source is James Corbett at CorbettReport.com, and he's Corbett Report on YouTube. He's he's a uh, he's the real deal. He's and he's got a lot of info, and he's also a volunteerist slash anarchist, so that helps because we see things through the same same lens rather than the, the rose colored glasses that <laughs> other people have had forced upon them uh, everything's uh, great in the world just watch tv and watch your sports ball yeah. don't worry about anything real yeah, that's that's you know? just about the way it was too as long as people have tv and sports to watch they're not gonna they're not gonna make a move they're not gonna do anything about anything uh it seems right like. Okay, well, we're going to get some more stuff up for you guys, and this anarchy uh, stuff. 
uh, I want to understand it. I want to learn about it. Uh, that way I'll be able to converse more easily with you about it. Uh, I was talking. I, I, go ahead. I very much appreciate that you that you are interested and want to understand it because so many people will just immediately poo-poo on it yeah. and, and, and not be like, wait, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? What, what, do you, what are you trying to say? And it's like, well, I, I don't want all my fellow humans enslaved anymore. That's what I'm trying to say. And a lot of people just call me names for that, so that's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to do that. We're going to get some information up so that we all understand what you guys are about. I'm in, I want to include all you guys in everything here. Uh, we'll get some information up for you guys that 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 are uh, anarchists. I want to learn about it. I want to. I might want to switch over to anarchy. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Not having rulers. If we can become better men and better women, perhaps that's what we need to do. For sure. Um. And the, like, like. Okay. My journey to anarchism. It was. It, it was over decades, obviously, and there were a lot of little things that happened that sort of led up to it, but the exact moment, I remember the exact moment that I realized what was going on, and it was, I was reading Lysander Spooner's essays, No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority, and it, it, it's not even that far into the essay that I got, but I had to take a lot of breaks, because that dude was really pissing me off, and I'm like, what the is wrong with this guy <laughs> because he was dissing on my constitution and I didn't like it and I took a lot of breaks and then I was like I, I had to tell myself I'm like why are you so mad go finish reading that and then at one point I, I it just clicked he he said something very specific that resonated with me and and I remember I Skyped my husband. He was at work, and I'm like, "Holy shit, I'm an anarchist!" And <laughs> and, and he said something really. He said something back to me. I can't remember exactly what it was. And I go, "It just means no rulers, not no rules." You know, I was so mad at him for not understanding. <laughs> but it was it was it. That was one of my awakenings, and it was lovely. Excellent. Uh, yeah, we want we want to get some information up here for you guys. Uh, <coughs> Dick and Roscoe uh, S5 over on uh, the Dick and Roscoe show. He's going to have some information up. Uh, we want to include all of you guys in everything we do. We're going to understand you a little better. Perhaps you'll understand us a little better. Uh, and perhaps together we can get something done. Uh, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. We need everybody that we can get. Uh, we need to be on our side, just our side. Uh, us against the tyranny of the government, I think. Uh, and it's going to take that. Uh, so I'm just yep. going to do agree. I'm going to do my part and uh, uh, include you guys in everything and get you guys to explain to us how you think, how you feel about stuff. And just so we'll know. Uh, that way we can all be friends. We don't all have to agree. We're never going to all agree. We're, we're human. Uh, you're never going to get all humans to agree. There's always going to be dissension and, and strife in the ranks. Uh, just, <laughs> it just comes with being human, I guess, or to some humans. Uh, anyway, Rika, I appreciate you being here. I'm going to let you go. I actually have to go take some medicine. Uh, so I'll let you go. And uh, have, you have a wonderful day. And thanks for coming here. I hope you come again, okay? Okay, it was great talking to you. Uh, be well. Uh, you too. I uh, really appreciate it. Okay.